planting those summer garden fruits and vegetables, great idea. But there's some important things to know about food safety. Tanya Short is the Health and Human Services Educator for the Purdue Extension, and she is with us this morning. Good morning, Tanya. Good morning. So canning, it's you know an age-old tradition. It's a great way to preserve food, but there are some ways to do it correctly. Um, absolutely. <laughs> and I get plenty of calls in the office that tell me maybe folks have been following traditions of their great-great-grandmother, and we've learned a lot since then about maybe those aren't the best practices anymore. So, Well, let's talk um, about what were those that, because I mean, I certainly can with my great-grandmother and grandmother too. What were they doing then that we don't suggest now? So, um, for example, jams and jellies were canned um, with a paraffin wax seal. Yes, <laughs> I remember. Yes, and that is a no-no. So oh. that can that can shrink away and allow exposure to the air, and now you've got a, a buildup of potential pathogens. And so it needs to be processed in your boiling water bath, just like anything else that's a high acid food. Um, another thing I hear is. Um, using any sort of canning process that is not a boiling water bath or a pressure canner. Right. I don't necessarily want to say those out loud because they say you shouldn't say the things you don't want people to do. <laughs> but if you're not using one of those two things, it's not right. I'll just leave it at that. Um, and with that in mind, knowing which, um, which method is appropriate for the foods you're doing. So if it is a low acid food, well, let me back up. If it's a high acid food, so that's pretty much most of our fruits or things that have been pickled, that can go in our boiling water bath canner, okay? Anything else is considered low acid and it needs to go in the pressure canner. So we're talking and, about chemist, food chemistry here. Absolutely. And so the reason behind that is um, there's a couple of different mechanisms that help prevent the growth of microorganisms and pathogens. And one of those is acidity and another is heat, uh, the heat treatment. So if it has high acidity, it can withstand a lower heat treatment by just putting it in the boiling water, right? But if it doesn't have that acidity, we put it in the pressure canner because if you're canning at, say, 11 PSI, you are effectively at 240 degrees, which is what, 28 degrees above the boiling point of water. So you are actually cooking that food product at a temperature that's higher than the boiling point of water in order to make sure all those pathogens are killed. Well, that's great, really great reminder. And also, it, you're also cooking that food again if you've already uh, cooked it. So there are lots of things to know about getting the food ready to go in those sterilized jars. Oh, yeah, and I'm glad you said that. The jars need to be, that was on my list of things to say. Airs with our jars. Make sure they're sterilized first before we put the food in. Um, don't reuse our lids. They're a one-time use only. Rings should only be finger tight. So the rings um, that go on the top of the lid, we don't need to, to get those on there super tight. In fact, it could actually impede the proper process if you do. So those only need to be finger tight in order for proper processing. And um, making sure you get the bubbles out first. Um, using not a metal tool, but a plastic tool. Here's one I like. Um, the, the bottom end of it is curved for getting the bubbles out of the jar. Um, and then the top end, I don't know if you can see oh, that yeah, against the white it. background, yeah. actually has a stair step for helping you measure the head space. So that's another common thing that folks don't realize how much that matters um, in how much space you leave empty at the top of your jar before you process them. Tanya, this is all such great information and almost information overload, but I want uh, to be able to direct our viewers to your website so they can get the step-by-step, tip-by-tip advice. How do they do that? Absolutely. So normally we have an in-person class every year where it's a five-day intensive hands-on um, how-to class, um, but because of life circumstances we weren't able to do this year. So we went online in the, um, to deliver those programs and the recordings can be found at our website, which is puext.in slash food dash preservation. Thank you so much for all these great helps today. It's great to see you, Tanya. All right, you too, thanks. We'll be back with more Local Lifestyles right after this message. Please stay with us.